A professor in seminary taught us early on the four things that we need to watch out for are pleasure, power, honor, and wealth. Not that all these four things are bad, but an excess of them will always try to find us, attack us, and distract us from the Christ which we are seeking. Pleasure, power, honor, and wealth. These things are all going to try to jump in the four compartments of our hearts that are seeking the Christ. And in the gospel today, everyone is seeking the Christ. We're on the other side of history. We're on the other side of the resurrection. We know that Christ is Jesus, the Son of God, our Savior, the Anointed One. But in the Old Testament, and all those Jews waiting for this Messiah, it was just some mystery person who was going to come along and change their world, fulfill all their desires, and make all their dreams come true. So when they start seeing this striking figure of John the Baptist, they start to think, wow, maybe he is the Messiah. And the way that we can know the Christ in our life, because there are other things in our lives that are going to try to convince us that they are the Christ, whether it be a thing, a person, an idea, they will always try to feed us and give us pleasure, power, honor, and wealth. But the way we can know who truly is the Christ and who truly points to the Christ is the one who rejects these things. And we have a great display in this gospel passage today of John the Baptist rejecting all four of these. This is one of the few gospel passages which does not have Jesus in it. And we miss him. That's why we're waiting. That's why this is a week of joy. No, the star this week is John the Baptist. Can you imagine what it would be like if crowds of people were coming to you saying, what should we do? That's kind of what I have, a little bit. That's why the professor warned us of pleasure, power, honor, and wealth. Because we thought, well, we don't really have much of any of those as priests. But you can always overeat. You can always oversleep. We have power because all you are sitting in the pew right now listening to me. That power, that voice says, hey, listen to what I have to say. Not what Jesus has to say. There's honor in being asked, oh, Father, let me pay for your meal. Oh, here, you move to the front of the line. And I'll graciously take that. But I'm never going to assume that it's mine. I'm never going to assume that I deserve it or I'm entitled to it. And the wealth, well, we don't have much either as priests, but what little I do have is mine. It's all mine, and I'm going to keep it for myself. So we started to see throughout our four years of seminary that these four things, anybody is uh, subject to them, whether you're a priest, a seminarian, a grandma, an uncle, whoever. So we are invited to take with joy the example of John the Baptist, who has crowds coming to him, hundreds of people saying, what should we do? Tell us and we'll do it. And he doesn't say, serve me, worship me. He says, no, the Christ is coming. You should share your cloaks and your food with each other. Make this place, make this world a better place. Tax collectors come to him. They say, teacher, what should we do? He could have said, you know all that extra stuff you steal from the poor? I want you to give it to me. No, he says, stop it. I want you to be fair in your dealings. He has soldiers coming to him. Power. The officials of the Roman army are asking him for advice. He could say, you know that town over there? I want you to conquer it and make me king. And finally, honor. He rejects honor by saying, not, I'm the Christ, you should follow me and listen to me. He says, no, one better than me is coming, and I'm not even unworthy to undo his sandals. And so as we wait with joy for the one who will satisfy 
all the desires of our hearts. Let's keep in mind that those four things, power, pleasure, honor, and wealth, can be extinguished by the light of those four candles, which we are about to see all be lit. And take the example from Jesus himself, who, if you think about it, his birth and his death in a wooden manger and on a wooden cross are both completely deprived of power, pleasure, honor, and wealth. And yet now he rules the universe as our Savior. Come, Lord Jesus. We're waiting for you. Amen.